this video, we're going to explore the dynamic tuning feature of Infinitone 2. This feature resolves centuries of debate between temperament and pure tuning. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to scales, 12 tones, and explorations in 12, you'll see all of these different 12 tone scales, which map onto the 12 tone keyboard. The most common one, of course, that we use all the time is 12 EDO, 12 equal divisions of the octave. And what happens in this temperament is that each chord that you play is equally out of tune. So if I play C, E, G, B flat, C dominant seven, you'll see how wacky it is. <laughs> and the visualizer, totally chaotic. And if I start to modulate and change keys, each key that I modulate into is equally out of tune. Now, if I go to a just intonation tuning, which is based in pure tuning, based on the harmonic series or just intonation ratios, I have the first chord is in, in tune. You can hear the difference between, I can actually go in between the two if I play here and click on this, it snaps into place. So you can see and hear the difference. But you'll notice here in the scale viewer that the notes are no longer evenly spaced. Some are flatter, some are sharper. So what happens if I go to change keys? Uh-oh. The other keys aren't in tune. In this one, I can play C dominant seven and F, but none of the other ones are in tune. So we either have temperament, which is everything is equally out of tune, or we have pure tuning in which some things are in tune and some things are way out of tune. And what Infinitone 2 does with the dynamic tuning is it completely resolves this challenge. So I'm gonna go to dynamic tuning freestyle DT prime 13. DT is dynamic tuning and prime 13 means that in the harmonic series it uses up to 13. Don't worry about if you don't understand that now, we'll explain that more in a different video. So now I'm going to play that same chord progression. And now it's going to always be in tune. What's happening here is whatever the longest note that I hold is, in this case I'm holding the B flat, that's going to become the pivot point. So that is the note um, around which all of the other notes adjust. So I'm going to reload this. As you'll notice actually with, with this freestyle just intonation tuning, the pitch shifts quite a lot. So here's C, C7. I'm going to hold the B flat. It's B flat seven. I'll hold A flat. And what's happening here is the notes are actually jumping really fast in real time to kind of find the appropriate tuning. Now, if I go to the morph section and I turn up the time on the morph, let's see, one and a half seconds, or maybe even a little bit longer, maybe two seconds, and then I play. You'll hear all the notes sort of slowly jump into place. So that's what's happening behind the scenes. It's actually just morphing all the notes. And you can play with that. Sometimes you might like that aesthetic of it sort of slowly coming into tune. So what's exciting about this, let's reload this again and get it back onto middle C, is that I can access a very wide variety of harmonic colors now. There have been some other attempts and some other software in the past to do dynamic tuning, but you've been very limited in the harmonic colors. You've been limited in the kinds of chords that you can play. Um, in this, you can have as many harmonics as you want. You can play very, very complex chords and it will all analyze it and all do it in real time. It's a massive improvement to um, any attempt at the past of doing this. So now I'm gonna reach a little bit further into the harmonic series and get an 11th harmonic. And this will be represented uh, as kind of like the flat five of a chord um, in, this, in this preset. So I'm gonna play C, E, C, E, F sharp. 
flat five. Now I get the 11th harmonic. You can see right here, it's right in between E and F sharp. It's kind of like a quarter tone. So now I can modulate with that as well. And I can play all these different kinds of chord progressions that are not even close to being available on a standard keyboard. And they all stay in tune. Um, another fun thing here is the the 13th harmonic. It's also kind of quarter tone-ish, and I can access that by playing um, C, E, G, G sharp. C, E, G. And now I can modulate with that. So in that case, what was happening was the 13th harmonic was becoming the perfect fifth. So there's the 13th. G sharp, I'm going to hold that. Now I'm going to play C sharp. It's the perfect fifth. So it's modulating up, modulating up by these intervals. Now I can change. Now it's going to become the third. So I'm going to play C, E, G sharp. Now I'm going to play E. Now it's the major third. Play that a little faster. really start to get in between the cracks of standard harmony and tra traverse multi-dimensionally through the harmonic um, uh, sound space. So as I said before, um, Infinitone 2 can actually analyze very big chords. So I'm going to reload this again, get it back on standard middle C, and go to a little different preset, Pearl Oracle. It's a little bit softer for these big harmonic chords. And I'm going to play a really big chord based on the harmonic series. And then I'm going to modulate that. And you'll see that even a very big complex chord can, can modulate. I'll hold the E up here. So, wow, that's some pretty complex harmony, but because it's so in tune, it's very beautiful and very accessible to the ear. Um, I want to show you another modulation. Uh, let's reload this, get it back to C. And I'm going to go to a different preset here on the synth side. I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, Counter Strike. And what this one's going to use, it's going to use two different kinds of pivot points. I'm going to do an uh, a, an, an 11 and the 11 is going to become the 7 of the um, A flat chord and what happens if I keep playing this pattern over and over and over again you'll hear the pitch center drift slowly 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 down and sweep through the uh, pitch field And so you can see with the freestyle just intonation, which is what this setting is, freestyle, that um, that what freestyle means is that there's no fixed pitch center. But there's another kind of dynamic tuning, and that is fixed. So I'm going to go to DT Prime 13, 12 EDO pivots. And what this does is it has a fixed tuning and every single one of the pivot points will always adhere to the fixed tuning. So if you're playing with a band in 12 EDO, it's standard tuning, and you want to do dynamic tuning, there will always be one note that's right with a band. So you can play with a band and have dynamic tuning at the same time. So I'm going to play that same pattern. And you'll see it's going to shift. So I keep playing it over and over again, and what the pitch is doing is it's always adjusting, so whatever the pivot point is, it's always in 12 EDO. Um, you know, you might want to play with the morph in that, so like if I, if I put it up a lot higher, it's going to be really wonky and shifty. Or 
Or if I make it faster. Just depends on the kind of aesthetic that you're looking for. So the next thing I want to show you is in fixed. Another benefit of that is you can actually use it to play really simple harmony. Um, so I'm going to go to DT prime 5. Uh, the lower the number of the harmonic limit, the more simple the harmony is. So most of the music musical intervals that we're used to hearing in Western music and most world music is it's called five limit. So it uses the harmonics three and five. So I'm going to play a simple folk, folk song here, Danny Boy, just the first little part of the melody of it. And you'll hear that I can play that in real time and stay in the fixed fixed tuning. So you can hear it sounds a little bit different than 12 equal temperament, but the chords all lock in. There's a just major third there. So you can actually use this to play very simple uh, melodies as well. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to show you is um, the manual versus automatic. So I'm going to go back here to dynamic tuning, DT prime 13. And you'll notice here that there's a trigger mode, auto, auto and manual. So automatic, as you heard before, it's constantly doing, every time I play a note, the notes adjust. And manual, if I play something, it doesn't adjust until I hit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that chord progression and hit manual trigger, watch, snaps into place. You can assign a, a trigger on your keyboard to this uh, parameter and, and trigger it however you want with a mouse or with a, with a kind of trigger. And this might be useful if you're looking for that, oh, I hit that chord and whoa, now it's in place. Um, and another fun thing to do is adjust the, the morph time with this. I'm going to put this on two seconds and then we'll see what happens with that. That's a kind of fun effect to hear that um, flow into place. Um, you also notice that when dynamic tuning is on, that these scales are all um, blanked out because it's actually not select. You're not able to select any of these uh, while dynamic tuning is on. Another thing I like to note about dynamic tuning is in this current version of Infinitone 2, it works best if you're doing kind of uh, arpeggiated chords where you're playing one note at a time. Let's turn this back on auto. Uh, because what's happening is, is Infinitone, every time you play a note, it's reanalyzing the, the chord. And so if you play too many notes at once, it doesn't always get it. So um, that we obviously hope to approve and improve in future versions. But in this one, um, it's good to explore more kind of arpeggiated sorts of chords and chord progressions and just look forward to in the future when we um, make the algorithm more efficient and you're able to play all of the notes all at once and for it to be more accurate. Um, anyway, I hope you really enjoy exploring this feature. It is so exciting to be able to explore all these different kinds of har harmonic modulations and stay in tune the whole time. Um, there's a very rich and beautiful uh, multiverse of possibilities that you can discover uh, using this feature of Infinitone.